All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the laboratory technique extraction. Extraction is a laboratory technique that is used to separate compounds based on solubility differences in two solvents, one of the solvents being aqueous and one of the solvents being organic. So to understand how this technique works, we first need to do a quick review of how solubility works. As you might recall, we often use the phrase like dissolves like. So that generally means that polar compounds will want to dissolve in the polar solvent, which is aqueous with water. At the same time, nonpolar compounds want to dissolve in nonpolar solvents. This would be the organic solvent. We can take a look at a few examples. So here we have four examples with molecules, and the question we want to know is, will each of these molecules dissolve in an organic solvent or an aqueous solvent? So if we take a look at this first molecule on the top left, toluene, we can see that this molecule is essentially completely nonpolar. It's a hydrocarbon. There aren't any parts of the molecule that are polar. So if you have a molecule that's nonpolar, it will want to go into a nonpolar organic solvent. Let's take a look at the molecule on the top right. We have glucose. Glucose, you can see, has a bunch of hydroxyl groups that are all very polar. So this is a polar molecule, so it will dissolve in the polar solvent, the aqueous solvent. On the bottom left, we have a molecule called benzoic acid. This one gets a little bit more complicated because you can see it's got a benzene ring, which is mostly nonpolar, and you've got a carboxylic acid that is polar. So do you, what do you do in these situations where parts of the molecule is polar and parts of it is nonpolar? Well, you have to look at the molecule as a whole. Overall, is this a polar molecule or is this a nonpolar molecule? In this case, you can see you've got a few atoms here that's polar, but really the majority of the molecule is nonpolar. So a compound like benzoic acid will dissolve in the organic solvent. Now, what we can take a look at is our last example, which is very similar. It's really just benzoic acid, but it's been deprotonated into benzoate. And what's quite fascinating is that benzoate has fairly high solubility in the aqueous solvent and low solubility in the organic solvent. So one question we might ask is, why do we have this big difference? And the reason for the difference is the introduction of a full charge in the molecule. So what you should know is that even if your molecule looks largely nonpolar, if you introduce a full charge in the molecule, which can be a full negative charge or a full positive charge, that's going to substantially increase the solubility of that compound in the aqueous solvent. And that is actually something we can take advantage of in extraction. And that's because it's easy for us to introduce full positive charges and full negative charges using acid-base chemistry. And here are the functional groups that are relevant for extraction. You have this group over here, which is the carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid is a fairly strong weak acid, so it's fairly easy to deprotonate. So this can be deprotonated with a weak base. And the typical weak base that is used to deprotonate carboxylic acids is sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3. We can then take a look at this compound over here, the phenol. Now, the phenol does have a hydrogen that is slightly acidic, but it's not quite as acidic as the carboxylic acid. So it can't be deprotonated by a weak base. However, if you use a strong base, the strong base can deprotonate the phenol. However, you have to be careful because if a weak base can deprotonate a carboxylic acid, then a strong base definitely can also deprotonate the carboxylic acid. So here we would say that these two functional groups can be deprotonated with a strong base. 
And our example that we typically use is sodium hydroxide. All right. So finally, we have one last functional group. So that functional group is the amine. And the amine, the hydrogens are not acidic at all. In fact, the amine is actually basic. However, you can still make organic molecules move from the organic layer into the aqueous layer by introducing a full positive charge. And you can do that with an amine by protonating it with an acid, right? Then it'll become NH3 plus. So we say that this can be protonated with an acid. And in this case, since there's only one basic functional group, you might as well just use the strong acid. So usually we'll use hydrochloric acid, HCl. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of how extraction works. And here we've got a sample extraction procedure where we want to separate these four molecules, one, two, three, and four. So we're starting on the left for our separation. And you can see we're starting with the organic layer, which if we take a look at all of our molecules, yes, they do have some polar groups, but these molecules are largely going to be non-polar. And if you're unconvinced by the fact that they're non-polar, you can just say maybe there is an R group here and the R group can be a chain of carbon atoms. So we'll just make a note here, right? So let's just say that the R group is equivalent to this carbon chain. So these molecules are definitely not very soluble in an aqueous solvent as is. So we can then say that these four molecules, one, two, three, and four, would all dissolve in an organic solvent. But now let's see how we can change this by introducing different solutions. So first, we're going to add hydrochloric acid in an aqueous solution. So HCl dissolved in water. So what is this going to do? Well, when you mix an organic layer with an aqueous layer, they're immiscible, so they don't mix, right? So when you pour this solution on top, you're going to end up with two layers. You're going to end up with an aqueous layer and an organic layer that are separated from each other. However, when you shake your container, the molecules will get mixed up. So now the molecules can move into the aqueous layer or the organic layer. And which one they're going to move into is going to depend on their solubility. So as we said, to begin with, all four molecules are largely nonpolar and would go in the organic layer. So what does adding HCl do? Well, remember, HCl is able to protonate amines. So if we look at our four molecules, one, two, three, and four, number two has an amine. The amine can be protonated to introduce a full positive charge. So if this has a full positive charge, now it cannot go into the organic solvent and must move into the aqueous solvent. So that means up here, we would find molecule number two, but the other molecules are unaffected by the acid and will stay in the organic layer. So now, let's say we continue. So with our organic layer, which we've separated from the aqueous layer, which isn't too tough because since the layers are immiscible, you can just pour away one of the layers. So to continue the extraction, we know our organic layer still has three of the molecules. So we'll add sodium bicarbonate. So sodium bicarbonate, we know is a weak base and it's able to deprotonate carboxylic acids. So if we look at the remaining molecule, molecules, one, three, and four, we can see that molecule four has a carboxylic acid. So with the carboxylic acid, it will be deprotonated to gain a full negative charge. And with a full negative charge, it can no longer be dissolved in the organic layer. It must move into the aqueous layer. So that means we're gonna find molecule four in the aqueous layer, but molecules one and two or sorry, molecules one and three will be unaffected, so they will stay with the organic layer. And now again, we're gonna go ahead and pour away our aqueous layer. So now we'll have the organic layer with molecules one and three. 
and we're going to go ahead and add aqueous sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide we know can deprotonate carboxylic acids and phenols. Between molecules 1 and 3, molecule 3 has a phenol, but molecule 1 doesn't, right? It has the hydroxyl group, but it does not have the benzene ring. So that means molecule 3 will be deprotonated, it will obtain a full negative charge and will move into the aqueous layer, leaving molecule 1 in the organic layer. So in following this procedure, we can see how we were able to separate all four of these molecules using extraction, which takes advantage of acid-base chemistry. Now, one thing to be careful of is the extraction procedure here was done correctly. There are some situations where extraction procedures aren't done correctly. For instance, here the weak base was added before the strong base. If instead someone added the strong base first, then both molecules 4 and 3 would have moved into the aqueous layer because a strong base can deprotonate phenols and carboxylic acids. Okay. So this is how extraction works and what's most important to keep in mind for the MCAT is these three functional groups, carboxylic acids, phenols, and amines, and keeping in mind how we can protonate and deprotonate these groups to introduce full charges that will change their solubilities in organic and aqueous solvents.